So here's the thing. I don't, there's not very many people that I personally met who have an issue with the term cis and also affirm strongly and confidently that trans women are women in a way that they do not need to be distinguished from, as a lot of these people tend to say, biological women. Right, so straight away, we have a small little problem here. That massive, massive, small problem is that the end, biological women. You mean the fact that every single scientist consensus says there are such things as biological men and biological women and transgender and gender dysphoria specifically is to do with a psychological basis. Yeah, kind of a problem there, but we'll get further on into that very soon. Also, very, very quickly, I know it's just a title and I know I literally just spoke of something. I just really want to address the title. I personally don't think that cisgender is a slur. I think if I'm being intellectually honest enough, I know in which positions that you are trying to take and I know that you yourself do not even mean it in any single way as a slur. And I would have suggested that at least 95 to 98, maybe even 100% of people that are transgender would not use this as a slur. Even if people would use this as a slur, it's not really a slur. So, <laughs> I wanted to have a conversation with you guys about the whole idea that the term cis is a slur. Now, I have a lot of very passionate thoughts and feelings about this, but there are some reactions that I just inherently have from observing these conversations. And obviously this is something that kind of started because last week my video was entitled, Cis People, Please Stop Doing This. And it was kind of about how oftentimes I interact with cis people who have a very particular view of transgender people um, and you know, kind of tend to frame their narratives in a way that I don't tend to be to find to be true. I can point out to the Kalskum home that you said that you don't like the way that this feels. You don't like the way that that's true to you. That does not mean that it is true, though. I mean, you're saying about interactions that happen about how people perceive that you're talking about cisgender and how they perceive that they have their emotions and their thinking. Now, I don't want to do what about ism, but this is very, very easily discussed. If you want to talk about how you think and how you feel and how your emotions and how your thinking and feeling is really important and how the rest of the world needs to take note of it and how they need to take change of it, correctly they do in some aspects and I'm with you on that then if people are telling you what they think and what they feel and how their truth is are you not bound by your own ideology to listen and have an idea and have a conversation about their beliefs and their truth or is it just your truth that matters is well you know trans people hate being called things so why do they call us cis and I want to unpack the thoughts around that, but also talk about what cis actually means, and then we'll get deeper and deeper into the conversation there. So let's go. So <laughs> the term cis, for those of you guys who for some reason do not know, is a term that is used to describe people who are not transgender. Um, I'm a trans woman. That means that I was designated male at birth. And then I, you know, through a series of different experiences, recognized that the gender that it was assigned to me at birth was not the gender that I actually was. Transitioned, started living my life, and now I am cat black, you know? And you know what? More power to you. Do be whatever you want to be. I don't really have a problem with any of that whatsoever. The only thing that I do kind of have a problem with is your definition of cisgender. That your idea of cisgender is that people that are going to be assigned at birth their gender and people that identify with their birth or gender at birth, sorry. And that makes them cisgender. And what makes you trans is that you disagreed with what you were assigned with at birth. Now, remember this for later on when biological aspects come up. Again, I have no problem calling you a woman, Cat Black. No problem whatsoever. To me, you are a woman. If you want to be a woman, you are a woman. I am more than happy calling you a woman. But please, for the love of God... 
or in general, I'm an atheist, by the way, and just turn a phrase. But please, for the love of God, don't try and say that you are biologically a woman. You're not. The same as I can no ever be a biological woman. The same as no biological woman can ever be a biological man. My personal point on this has always been when people, and I've talked to a couple of trans people before, my point has always been to them, I don't think that there should be two genders. I think that there should be four genders. There are two sexes, but I think there should be four genders. Maybe maybe five, if you want to go down that road. But I think that that's the way it should be, because I think that at least you should have male, female, trans male, trans female. I'm more than happy, and I'm sure most reasonable people would actually be quite happy with that. If for some reason that people are not happy with that aspect of identity, then I would like to know the reasons why that you wouldn't be happy with that aspect of identity. Especially from more of a, a biological background in understanding gender. But again, that's a question, that's what my opinion is. I'm not saying that I want that to be fact. I do not know. But I'm asking. But, you know, cis people are people who, you know, the doctor said, hey, you are male, and then they go through their life, and, you know, that's not really a thing that they question in a way that leads them to the conclusion that they are anything other than a man, right? That's kind of what being cis means. It's basically somebody who is not transgender, right? No, that's what you're trying to frame it as. You're trying to frame it as cisgender is the objectivity of outside of the room that being cisgender is something that needs to be portrayed as something different that yes you agree with this but if i'm a woman i can be trans as well as a woman but cis you can only be this way you're actually excluding the majority of the populace in the world that identify in a particular way now Again, remembering that this is to do with identity. This is to do with the idea of how you associate yourself and how you identify yourself as. This is not biological. And let's not go into all the biological aspects. Let's stay with identity. If you're going to try and say that you don't agree with what you were at assigned birth, surely that should be the basis. And what you're doing is something different. So surely if the basis is that you were a man to begin with, and you want to transition to a woman, then logically, and logic would dictate, that you would be a trans woman because you transitioned to become a woman. Now, personally, I don't see what the issue is with that. I don't see why that matters that if I was to say, right, well, you're a trans woman. I mean, don't get me wrong. Personally, I would drop the trans and I would just call you a woman because generally I'm a respectful kind of guy, if I can ever say the word respectful because of respectful. <laughs> but generally that's what my issue is with this that you're trying to say that what the basis is is not normal and that basis is what should be changed to be called cisgender and what transitioning into shouldn't be called trans or whatever gender but should just be called that gender and i think that's where a lot of people would fight back on that why are you changing the basis rather than not accepting the differences Surely it's your differences that make you unique, yes? Or is that not the way that this is anymore? Now, a lot of cis people, we're going to be using this term. Obviously, it's a term that I believe in. Um, well, we'll say this for now, because I know you guys sometimes like your euphemisms, and, you know, I want to... I want to respect your culture or whatever, but people who are not transgender, right, often go through life believing that they have their their idea of gender is the right idea. They are normal and transgender people are not normal. They are abnormal. So it feels strange for um, them to be in a position where they're being told that they are, you know, something other than normal. I swear to God that I did not watch this video before actually trying to do the the responses to it. I'm quite shocked that from just watching the previous segment before Carton did the response to it, that I was correct on what your identity ideology is. That what you want to do is change the base 
of what society in itself classifies as, let's use your word, normal. I would say average, but, you know, averages and outliers make it sound more scientific than it being personalities or, you know, personal attacks than, you know, normal and abnormal. But going back to the actual point itself, you want to change the base. Because you want to change the base, you want to push that to a side and say what the normal is, is cis. But what we are is male and female. Now that means that you are logically trying to shift your identity into society's norms and change society's norms to fit your identity and perception and or your truth of your identity. Now again, I have no problem in calling you a woman. I have no problem in calling a woman that wants to be a man a man. I have no problem in any of this whatsoever. The problem and backlash that most trans people seem to get, and no, this is not universal. I know there are some actual bigots that are out there. But most of the general pushback that comes back is probably from my position, where you look like you are trying to shift the norms to fit your ideology in place of where the social norms begat. And I think that in itself is quite worrying. Common comment that I get is, stop calling me a cis woman, I'm a woman, right? In fact, I got this exact comment on my last video. And I commented, you know, just kind of to say it, um, stop calling me trans, I'm a woman, right? I don't mean to keep on pushing this point, but do you see where I'm coming from? Where her ideology is to push the norm out of the way and put her as the basis. Her ideology, her interpretation of truth, understanding of her identity as the basis. She's trying to shift what the average is in society to put her as the average and as starting point and push everything else to one side to align with her ideology and her understanding. Rather than trusting in societies perception of ideology and trusting in society's version of what we perceive identity as of averages and that's kind of where we differ i think that if you are going to classify yourself as a trans woman then you have to have transitioned from a base which meaning that your gender to begin with your biological gender is what you transitioned from into so that would mean logically and logic would dictate that that would be the basis. Now, again, I'm quite happy to call you a woman. But if a woman wants to say that you are a trans woman because I am a woman, technically she is correct. If you want to go down to the biological aspects of it, then technically she is correct. Now, I think that's where a lot of people are pushing back on the trans issues and the trans aspect of things. Now, I don't really talk about things that I don't particularly have an interest in. But recently, I've had quite a lot of interest with this. I've told this story to a couple of people before. I've had a couple of friends that have decided that they were going to transition. And I have been through different parts of the transitioning phase with them on different aspects. And I do not wish it on anybody to go through it. It is a hard and it is a grueling aspect. And changing one's identity to fit with one's prescribed feelings of how they feel is an immense, should we say, it is an immense bravery to be able to go and do. And I'm not taking anything away from that. But for you to say that you identify as a woman is the same as a biological woman saying that she is biologically a woman. Do you see the transcrepancy there? Or is it just the basis of identity for you? And if it's just the basis of identity for you, why does it matter if somebody says that I'm biologically a woman? If the identity is what matters, not the biology. I just wanted to ask that question. And then this person went on and said, well, you know, I'm, you so, you so I, I'm a biological woman, you're a transgender person. And I'm, and I, and you know, and I said, well, <laughs> If you would like to get to a point where we're not using these terms, right, then we need to stop making the differentiation between trans and cis so important, right? Again, I did not watch this video before responding. I like my responses to be as organic as possible and I do not script them either. These are what my personal thoughts and feelings are on the situation. But I'm really amazed and shocked that 
And I don't mean to big myself up, but I'm really shocked that I am literally hitting the nail on the head with Cat Black, where she is trying to suggest and say with these snippets that what she wants to do is push aside what the basis is from her transitioning to one identity to another identity, as now the trans is the base identity and you're now either side of the trans issue or the trans identity. And I think that's very nihilistic very self-centered, very my world is the center of the universe and you have to accommodate mine. Where if we're going to live in society, we have to live through society norms, the averages that are in society. And if we have a basis of most people are, should we say, happy to be assigned with their gender and accept that their assignment is correct, then that would have to be the basis of our society. And if you are going to transition from an assigned gender to another gender, then that would be the outlier, the abnormality, if you want to put it in that term, which I don't think you're abnormal and I don't mean it in a derogatory term. I just find it very interesting that you're shifting what you think should be the basis of terminology for identity, that yours is the most important and should be the basis and everybody else should accommodate you. I find that massively interesting. Because the reason why we even use the term trans is because we're trying to speak specifically about a type of person. But my sort of position is if we got to a point in society where we were not, where these things were not very important, we wouldn't really have the, re the need to call people cis or even trans. But there in itself lies a massive problem. It is massively important. Because what you're trying to do is trying to put your identity as itself the most important aspect. And obviously to you, it is. And to me, mine is mine. So I, I completely understand where you're coming from and where you're going. But you are trying to say that biological gender and transgender should be the same. But unfortunately, it's not. Not biologically. Now, you could argue the point of identity could be the same well i identify as a woman so therefore i am and vice versa and all the memes and jokes and in, invented can possibly fit into this aspect but if you're going to talk about biological aspects and how it does affect society what your biological standings are then yeah it does affect society and it is massively important that's the reason why we label what we label the way we label it so it affects society and so society can understand and accept it. Now, again, this doesn't mean that I want to push you to be an outlier. It doesn't mean that I want to push you out and say that what you identify as doesn't count and doesn't matter. It's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that remember that you are transitioning. That means that for more people that are in your position, for it to be understood that are going through a gender dysphoric situation where they do not identify with the gender that they have as their body, that they have a position and a setting to be able to do that in a safe and secure environment, where if we just say that these terms no longer matter, we actually lose what they actually mean. Gender dysphoria has a specific meaning and the specific prescribement of transitioning from one gender to another. Now, I have no problem with that. I have no issue with that. I think most people, I can't speak for all, but I would have said that most people would agree that that doesn't have an issue. That's just what that issue is and needs as a prescribement. So why can't we still keep that? Why is it that you want to blur the line, so to speak? Is that from your own nihilistic point of view of trying to accept yourself as being a biological woman, as in to do with your gender dysphoria? Or is that more to do with trying to change societal norms to try and accept trans people as women as a whole? The reason why I ask that question so specifically to yourself, and I, I don't think that you'll respond, and if you do, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about this. But specifically, the reason why I ask you that is because it does seem very nihilistic in your approach that you want this terminology to be changed. I suppose it's the same as when you have a black conservative speaking. Does that black conservative speak for all blacks? No. Does that one white Republican speak for all white, Repu uh, all white people? Of course not. Do you speak for all trans people? Is this what trans people want as a whole? Or is this your own interpretation of what you think and what you feel should happen by yourself? 
and I'd be very interested in hearing anybody's answers on that, especially yours, Cat Black. You would just have women, and we would understand inherently that just because someone's a woman doesn't mean this, 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 and this. It can also, it can mean this, it can mean that, it can mean a bunch of different things, right? So honestly, I really didn't watch this video beforehand, and this is honestly as organic as possible, but I'm really shocked. I am honestly really shocked that I was able to gauge what I perceived your motives to be, and to me, your motives seem to be change societal norms to be able to fit your identity, your understanding of identity, and your identity in general into the definition of what a woman is. Because what you want to do is blur the lines between biological women and trans women. Now, I do understand this from where you're coming from. I do understand the reasoning behind where you're coming from on this as well. I actually honestly really do, believe it or not. But societally, I don't think that that is going to happen. I don't think biologically it could ever happen. But it does seem very interesting that what you want to do is change the whole of societal norms to fit your identity into what should be a societal norm. I do find that extremely interesting. And I would really like to have a conversation with you about that if you would ever feel free or interested or if anybody else that is similar in ideology to this that would want to have a talk about it i am very interested in that aspect of why do you think that you need to change the definition of what a woman is to be able to fit what you are into womanhood I said this in my last video and i still believe this to be true most of people will never be that invested in understanding and 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 and, and accepting transgender people. I said this again in my last video, but most of people will go through life believing that trans people are telling a lie to themselves and those around them. And all they want to do is have that lie affirmed. They, they and, and, and what they're navigating around, how they're interacting with transgender people is really on that basis that these trans people are not quite being honest with themselves. And thus they have to sort of change their actions in order to be, you know, in line with that, right? In line with what you didn't seem to finish your thought on that and i think that thought would have been interesting interesting to be honest with you but you keep on trying to say that it's cisgendered people that are having the problem that are having the issue that they're the ones that think that you're telling a lie to yourself that the ones that you think are going against you that are stopping you from being and asserting what what you are Let's, let's take that as the premise that is correct. Let, let's take that as fact, shall we? To be trans, do you not have to be at least in a form of gender dysphoric? As in, you do not agree that you are assigned with the gender that you are with, which is a psychological point. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole psychology of everything. I don't think it's appropriate for this type of video. But do you not think that... I do agree with you that I do think that actually that cisgendered people do think that you are telling a lie to yourself. And I do think that cisgendered people in general or, you know, biological gendered people actually look at it and realize that it's not a lie that they are telling themselves as in for the trans people. It is what they believe, what they think they are actualizing as. And I don't think that biological sexes actually understand what gender dysphoria really is it's generally the same as if you were to try and say that you really believe that you were something else it's not a case of you telling yourself a lie it's that you really believe it and that's the point it's not a lie it's what you actualize as it's what you present as it's what your psychological definition is you see yourself as that and I do agree with you. I do think a lot of biological sexes don't actually understand what transgender actually is. But, and it is a massively big booty, that it is a psychological point. It is not a biological point. You disagree with this. You do not agree with your assignment, so to speak, in your way of looking at things, your assertion of self, your actualization of oneself which means that it is a psychological point, not your biological issue. And I think that's where the psychological and biological breaks down. 
And I think that's where we always will have an issue and a problem. I think the biology doesn't go with the psychology and the psychology doesn't go with the biology. And I think that's a conversation that we should really be having. We should really be trying to understand rather than, and I don't mean this in an attacking sense, people like yourself going out of your way to try and change societal norms to be able to force your identity, your identity of self into the definition of societal norm as a woman. I do not really get where that's coming from and that's why these are questions and not attacks. I really want to understand why you want to expand that definition of woman because if you want to be accepted as a trans woman why would it matter so much for you to be biologically woman and identified solely as a woman? If you're really for trans rights, why would you be fighting to be accepted solely as a biological woman, for instance? Because that's what you want the definition to be broadened out to, to include people like yourself. And I really would like an answer to that at some point from anybody, if that would be okay. Most people who are genuinely interested in, in helping and understanding transgender people will understand that cis is a term that has a usage and because of that, it's really not worth getting offended over. Now, I actually understand how people who aren't understanding of what the term means can hear the term and immediately read it as a negative thing. I don't think that it's necessarily I don't think it's really strange that somebody has that reaction, you know, especially people who go through their life believing that they're the normal ones and that, that trans people are the abnormal ones. Again, I actually, with the first part of this clip, actually honestly really do agree with Cat Black. I do think that people that think that cisgender is a slur doesn't understand what the actual terminology is for. All it means, as you quite rightly have suggested, is that Cisgendered is somebody that agrees with their sign gendered at birth. In that definition. How is that ever going to be a slur? But again, it comes back to you trying to change what the definitions of norm and abnormal are. You've listened to what you think abnormal is and how the negative connotations have been provided to you or how you prescribe those connotations into a bad negative form rather than it actually being let's change the word abnormal into an outlier meaning different what is wrong with being different what is wrong with being an outlier that means that you are above the sheep you are above the people you are different you're a butterfly rather than a caterpillar and i think that those perceptions in itself needs to be switched just because something is not the norm doesn't mean or is classified as an abnormal doesn't mean that it has negative connotations and it shouldn't denote that it has negativity. It should actually be as an aspect of being a different. It is an outlier. It is not as an average. That is it. I do think more people should prescribe to that notion of thinking rather than it being abnormal bad. Abnormal isn't bad. If we were to take 10 people and put them into a room you will have an abnormal person in that room but put that person to millions of people in the world and they would be classified as an average or as a norm norms are only what you have as an average if you have a group of gay people in a particular bar and you have one straight person in that bar that straight person is now the abnormal person because they are not the norm that's all that norm and abnormal is supposed to mean so when you take these connotations of being abnormal in a descriptive or descriptive terminology, then don't take it as that such. Now, if somebody comes up to you and says you're bloody abnormal, then fair enough, they're obviously being <laughs> obtuse for a goddamn negative reason. And I completely understand where you would get that from. But if people are just trying to say that there's normal and there's an abnormal, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're trying to call you a bad name. And trying to change that isn't going to actually help your cause. Changing the name of abnormal to try and include yourself into the definition of what a woman is would still classify you as an abnormal woman because you wouldn't be the normal classification of a woman regardless. The reclassification doesn't actually help you. It doesn't hinder you but it doesn't actually help you. So here's the thing. I don't, there's not very many people that I personally met who have an issue with the term cis and also affirm strongly and confidently 
that trans women are women in a way that they do not need to be distinguished from, as a lot of these people tend to say, biological women, right? Right. Oh dear. Um, yeah. What I said before, yeah. Remember, this is to do with identity, how the cat blacks identifies as, and now it has switched from the psychological identifiers now to try and turn it into a biological identifier. And that's where, for me, for me, the trans rights issues kind of disintegrate simply because I'm with you if it's an identity. I completely understand and I'm completely and utterly with you if you want people to identify you as such, as you want. I'm completely and utterly with you. But as soon as you want to try and change that psychological identity, that identity of how you prescribe yourself to be, to a biological determination, kind of falls flat simply because of different biological diseases that are going to affect women differently to how they affect men, how different biological standings are going to be affected to different men, how they're going to be different biological standings that affect women in different aspects. And the fact that you do air quotes of biological stuff, like identity in itself is to, is linked, is linked with biologic, biological arguments, is really astounding to me and really profoundly interesting. Simply because that I'm, and probably 90% of the world's population is probably with you in the idea of I want to identify as such, so identify me as such. But then you go into the point of because you are not a biological woman. Sorry, and I don't mean this in the harsh way that it sounds. You are not a biological woman. I will call you a woman. I will identify you as such. But if you want to be biologically a woman, you can't. Unless you change the whole genetic makeup that you were born with. Your whole DNA structure. And I'm sorry to say, we don't have the technology for that yet. Maybe we do in the future. I don't know. Maybe that's something that will be invented. Maybe that's something that can happen. And that's an argument that we can have then and there at that time. But for the moment, biologically, you cannot change. You can change your outward presenting appearance. You can change genitalia, your second and um, first and second appearing genitalia. So I completely and utterly understand where you would go with the presenting and with the idea of how you identify and present yourself completely with you. But then to disregard the biological aspects and the biological markers that make women women and men men, I find that really ignorant and completely nihilistic to your own point of view and your own form of trying to identify as yourself and how you want. And no, that's not me trying to say you're denying reality, you're denying what is. That's me trying to suggest and maybe throw in as an assertion that what you're trying to do is put your identity into a biological standing. And I don't think it fits the old square peg in a round hole situation. I just don't think it fits. I would understand it a little bit more if the position was, let's not call anybody cis, let's not call anybody trans, we're all just women. That to me is more of a sensible position. But generally speaking, people who have an issue with the term cis General, generally also have an issue with trans people, period, right? Not always, but uh, quite often, right? And they're not really interested in working towards a point of, you know, actually embracing that trans women are women, right? That's just that those, those two sort of ideas tend to not coincide. Right, I think I'm going to address this last point and I think I'm going to call the end of this video after that simply because it's getting to a very long aspect of the video and I have quite a lot to say on this issue and there may be a couple of junk cuts because I want to actually address point by point. So I want to go back, if I may. So you want to talk about if people were to accept trans rights, that what they would have to do is classify trans women as biological women or put them into the same identifier as women. And if they don't put you into that identifier or that category, then in your opinion, in your mind and in your interpretation, that that then makes them against trans rights and trans issues. 
Do you, and this is a question in general to anybody, so anybody can answer this, do you think that this has to do more with how you identify and how you want to identify with your gender dysphoria as such, or do you think this has more to do with the actual rights in which that you want to have enshrined? Because I'm quite happy, as most people probably are, in saying that you're a woman, you identify as a woman, I will identify you as such. Again, the biological aspects break down that statement for me. I cannot put you into the category of a woman because for you to be a trans woman and for you to have the transition that you had and for that to be respected, it has to be the point of explaining how you got there and why you got there. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to explain that to everybody. That doesn't mean that we have to identify you as a trans woman every time that you go onto a speaking corner or anything or on the internet or whatever. But, you know, there would be an capability or classification of going woman trans woman and personally i really don't see the issue on that simply because you have biological markers and you have psychological markers how you identify as such i don't really see why it matters too much apart from how you identify and how you want people to perceive you as your identity rather than actually fighting for the rights that you prescribe that you're fighting for. So last point on this one before we move on to the next point in this last little section. You say that people that have to accept you as a woman and if they don't they are against trans people. Does that mean that people that are with you identifying as a trans person are against you as a trans person if they say that you are not biologically a woman? If so, please explain why. So the next point that we need to apparently address is the fact that if somebody has a problem with the idea of you using the term cis, that somehow that they are against trans in general? I don't see how that position actually holds any water on that aspect, apart from what your opinion and what your assertion or understanding of that actually is. For instance, I don't have an issue necessarily with you calling me cis, but if you want to say that I'm not the basis of what society is, I could probably have a disagreement and an argument with you over that because, you know, societal norms and what I've said before. It goes to the point on that that I would be technically against you on the terminology of using cis, but yet I'm actually with you on the idea of trans rights. I'm actually with you on the idea of more and more people actually understanding what trans actually means and how the gender dysphoria actually affects trans people and actually affects the way that they think and they feel and how much more mental health that they need help with. And I try to be that as tactful as possible because not everybody has the same aspects and not everybody that is trans or gender dysphoric has all or any of the other symptoms that go with gender dysphoria, i.e. depression, anxiety, so on and so forth. But just because that I would be against cis or the terminology of cis, I'm not against trans rights. But in your mind, I am. And I want to know why. Why am I against trans rights if I'm against the terminology of cis? Apart from the idea of how you want to identify as a woman. That's it. I just wanted to ask. So now we come to the very, very last part. Which is, if I don't call you a biological woman, I now have lost any sort of allyship or any sort of good faith in having a conversation with you about this to be relegated to in your mind and your prescription of me now that i'm not for trans rights i'm not for equal representation i'm not for anything that you really want i'm not in that category anymore and one a direct question to you why why is it that that then obfuscates or denies me that allyship to be pushing your idea of trans rights because I won't call you a biological woman but I will say that you are a woman until you ask what biologically you are and then I have to be honest why is it that as soon as that happens 
I am no longer an ally. I'm now to be feared. I'm now to be hated. I now have no valid opinion. I now have no valid understanding of what's going on. And I never come in a good faith argument or standings. I, I really would want to know why you prescribe me in that particular way simply because I won't say that you're a biological woman but I will say that you identify as a woman you are a woman so on and so forth and I'm more than happy to have conversations with people about this if they want to about where I stand wherever and move forward from that I really would like to understand the why on that why is it that you think that I wouldn't be an ally because I won't say that you're biologically a woman why I won't scientifically state that you're a woman, biologically. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of this video. I thank you for spending as long as you have done. If you have gotten to this point, thank you very much. It was a very long-winded video, and I'm, I am sorry about that, but thank you. Uh, if you did like what I have done and try and bridge a divide or ask questions in general rather than attack, please like, share, and subscribe. And... If you want to help me anyway, which you can, there's um, some Patreon down below or up in the corners and whatnot. So please help, please give, you know, money, 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 all that type of stuff. I'm sorry. But thank you very much. And I look forward to speaking to you, Cat Black, or to anybody that wants to have a conversation about this or speaking to anybody again. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now, guys. Take care. See you again.